in this session i will be discussing vasculitis so what is vasculitis as the name indicate vasculitis itis is the inflammation of the blood vessel wall so basically it is the inflammation of the wall of the blood vessel we can see in the wall of the blood vessel there are three layers intima media and externa so if inflammation is occurring in these three layers it is known as vasculitis so this is the same cross section diagram of the three layers of the blood vessel wall here you can see this is intima intima is made up of endothelial cells and just below the intima just below the endothelial cells there is sub endothelium tissue which is having connective tissue so endothelium and sub endothelium together constitute intima in the media there are smooth muscle cells all these cells are smooth muscle cells and in the externa or adventitia there is connective tissue this is the structure of wall of a blood vessel before understanding the inflammation in the wall of the blood vessel you must understand what is the structure of the wall of the blood vessel now coming on the classification uh, of the vasculitis we can classify vasculitis by two ways what are the two ways first based on the size of the blood vessel which is involved whether it is large medium or small and second based on the type of inflammation so based on the uh, size of the blood vessel and based on the type of inflammation we will be classifying vasculitis in two ways so let me teach you the first type of classification that is based on the size of the blood vessel wall so there are three sizes of the blood vessel large medium and small based on which we can classify entire vasculitis so in large vessel basically aorta or its arteries the large arteries are involved in large vessel vasculitis there are only two large vessel vasculitis that is temporal arteritis and takayasu arteritis you can learn them like tt the mnemonic t and t temporal also known as giant cell arthritis and takayasu art arthritis so these two arthritis the either the aorta or the branches of the aorta that is large arteries are involved that's why known as large vessel arthritis so coming on the medium vessel in medium vessel we have only two that is po polyarthritis nodosa known as pan and kawasaki disease so p and k that is the mnemonic so tt that is temporal and takayasu the large vessel arthritis pan and kawasaki the medium vessel arthritis here basically arterioles arterioles are involved and here in small vessel arthritis the small vessel we can divide them whether they are anka positive or anka negative so what is anka anka is anti neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibodies so i will be explaining you there are two types of anka so whether they are these antibodies positive these are immune associated or non immune non anka associated if they are anka associated again anka is of two type p anka and c anka in the next diagram i will be showing you so here wagner chuck strauss microscopic pan these are anka positive in which the wagner is c anka positive c anka positive and remaining two that is chuck strauss and microscopic pan are p anka positive and in non anka uh, associated there are many others the most important is bechet and hs purpura so these are the important type of vasculitis you must study so what is anka as i have told you anka is anti neutrophilic cytoplasmic antibody a n c a anka so basically these are the antibodies against the neutrophils the granules present in the cytoplasm of the neutrophils so you can see the two types of the anka i will be showing you in this diagram so you can see this is a neutrophil this is the nucleus of the neutrophil in the cytoplasm granules are present and these antibodies please appreciate these antibodies these are against the granules in the cytoplasm of the neutrophils now what is p anka and c anka so c anka c stands for cytoplasmic these are present in the cytoplasm randomly anywhere in the cytoplasm and what is p for p anka here p stands for perinuclear they are also present in cytoplasm but not randomly they are present around the nucleus let me show you p anka and c anka can you see the green color is the antibody so this is c anka so i appreciate green color everywhere in the cytoplasm randomly present everywhere in the cytoplasm not only around the nucleus that is c anka and as versus this appreciate p anka so p anka is present only around the nucleus not everywhere around the cytoplasm it is present only around the nucleus that is perinuclear so this one is cytoplasmic anti nuclear uh, cytoplasmic antibody and this one is perinuclear antibody so c anka and p anka appreciate the two types in the diagram appreciate these you can see the green color everywhere in the cytoplasm so basically these are c anka these are c anka and here you can see the green color only around the nucleus 
not everywhere around the cytoplasm, only around the nucleus, the multilobated nucleus. So basically these are Pianka. Now you can see the contrasting difference between the Pianka and Sianka. So the two type of antibodies are Sianka, that is cytoplasmic one, and Pianka, that is perinuclear one. The location of the antibody in the cytoplasm of the nucleus is different. And you can appreciate this one is cytoplasmic, this one is perinuclear. The target antigen is proteinase 3 and target antigen is MPO, that is myeloperoxidase. So, Cianca is positive in Dragner. On the contrary, Pianca is positive in PAN, microscopic PAN and Chuck Strauss. So, these are the important disease in which they are positive. Coming on the classification again. So, we have studied the classification. Dividing based on the size of the blood vessel, we can divide the vasculitis into three types. The large vessel, medium vessel, small vessel. In large vessel, the two types are in front of you. Takai is when temporal, in medium vessel the two types are in front of you, Pan and Kawasaki. And in small vessel we divide based on Anka positive or Anka negative. If again Anka positive whether it is Pianka or Sianka. Sianka is only Bragner and Pianka is Chuck Strauss and microscopic Pan. So this is the simplified way of classifying them. Divide them into three parts, large, medium and small. So in the large we have only two temporal and Takayasu. That's it. In the medium, again we have only two. That is Pan and Kawasaki. That's it. So large is done. Medium is done. Large vessel arthritis. Medium vessel vasculitis or arthritis. Coming on small vessel. Small vessel is a little bit complicated but not a much one. So you can see we can classify them based whether they are Anka positive or whether they are Anka negative. If they are Anka positive, then we divide them whether they are P Anka positive or whether they are C Anka positive. Like this, we can divide them. So, let me tell you the names inside each of them. So, P Anka, C Anka positive is only one Bregner. P Anka positive is Chuck Strauss and microscopic PAN, microscopic polyarthritis. So, that is, these are the P Anka positive. Anka negative is the important one are HS purpura and Bechet disease. These are the important ones. So, you can see the important type of vasculitis, classifying uh, vasculitis based on the size of the blood vessel. Coming on the second type of classification, okay. Yeah, you can see uh, these are the large vessel in which either aorta or the large arteries are involved. That is giant cell arthritis and Takayasu. These are the medium one. You can see in the medium one, the arterioles are involved. Small arteries and arterioles are small involved. And in the small one, you can see basically capillaries are involved. In the small one, arterioles and capillaries are involved. Now, whether they are Anka negative, not associated with Anka or Anka positive. So, we can divide them like this. So, coming on the second type of classification, that is type of inflammation. There are two types of inflammation. So, we will see in the wall of the blood vessel, what is inflammation? Which type of inflammation? Whether it is granulomatous or necro necrotizing. So, the two type of inflammation is in front of you. Granulomatous and necrotizing, you can appreciate so, some of them show, you can see, first see the diagram. Can you see the wall of the blood vessel in this two diagram? Please appreciate the granulomas here. Can you appreciate a granuloma here, a granuloma here, a granuloma here? Appreciate the giant cells inside the granuloma. So, this is the media. You can see this is the lumen. This is the lumen of the blood vessel. This is intima and this is entire media. In the media, you can appreciate the multiple granulomas on this diagram having giant cells. So, this, this type of arthritis or vasculitis is granulomatous um, vasculitis. Uh, here you can see in the media, there is necrotizing. Uh, there, uh, there is necrosis. There is fibrinoid necrosis in the media. You can appreciate the lumen. It is normal. You can appreciate in the media a pink color structure less. A cellular material is there that the material is the necrosis here it is fibrinoid necrosis so it is necrotizing inflammation so based whether it is granuloma in the wall or whether it is necrotizing uh, inflammation in the wall the inflammation is of two types granulomatous and necrotizing based what is there in the wall granuloma or fibrinoid necrosis so basically in the morphology the pathologist have to see whether in the wall granuloma is present or whether in the wall uh, necrosis, the fibrinoid necrosis is present. So, based on that, we will decide the type of the inflammation. Uh, so, we divide the vasculitis based on them. So, some of them, that is giant cell, Takayasu, Bregner, Chuck Strauss, they are having granulomatous inflammation. Some of them, that is Pan, Chuck Strauss, Bregner, and microscopic Pan, they have 
uh, necrotizing inflammation you can appreciate two things Wagner is on both sides and Chuck Strauss is on both uh, both sides so Wagner and Chuck Strauss have both type of inflammation in the wall you can see the Wagner and Chuck Strauss they have granulomatous inflammation as well as necrotizing inflammation very very important MCQ repeated many times in the previous year question papers you can see uh, in the uh, in the previous year exam papers this question is repeated now I always ask student to make a comparative table between the various types of vasculitis so that uh, you will have a better retention to compare them uh, coming on the first type that is large vessel vasculitis. In the large vessel vasculitis, I will be teaching you two. So, starting with the first one that is temporal. You can see I am starting with the temporal arthritis. Large vessel, temporal and tachyosu. So, I am starting with temporal. The other name of the temporal is giant cell arthritis. It is the most common arthritis among all. Here, large arteries are involved. So, name the large arteries. Which large artery is involved in the temporal arthritis? So, as the name indicates, temporal temporal arthritis so temporal arteries involved so basically the branches the extracranial branches of the carotid arteries are involved so most commonly it is temporal but sometimes it can be vertebral and ophthalmic so most commonly it is temporal but sometimes it is vertebral and ophthalmic also so you can see this is the temporal artery so basically middle aged females are involved and esr will be raised so appreciate this is the temporal artery which is involved here and patient have typical pain in the temporal area and there is a hardening of the artery the temporal artery you can appreciate here here so zoom version of this is shown here you can appreciate the temporal artery so this is a live diagram of a patient please appreciate the hardness here please appreciate the thickness of the artery so this is the temporal artery the wall of the temporal artery become thickened and patient have temporal headache this is a typical symptom or complaint of the patient you can appreciate here morphologically if we take the biopsy from here and see the biopsy we will find the segmental involvement what do you mean by segmental so it is not the complete country so this area is involved having granulomatous inflammation this is normal again this area is involved then normal then involved so this is on a segmental uh, involvement with skip areas that is uh, there in temporal arthritis you can see and because of the inflammation of the wall of the temporal artery the temporal artery develops nodular thickness so if you palpate the temporal artery of the patient you can feel it like a thick rod so there is thickness there is thickness and uh, in the morphology you can see the temporal arthritis or giant cell arthritis in which granulomatous inflammation is noticed so on taking biopsy this is the biopsy image in the biopsy image you can appreciate the granulomas here appreciate this one appreciate this one and this one see the arrows inside the granulomas try to appreciate the giant cells this is a giant cell this is a giant cell see the type of giant cells langhans giant cell and foreign body giant cells both giant cells are, are seen here you can see here uh, just a second you can see here also appreciate the giant cell here so it is a langhans giant cell it is a granuloma you can appreciate this one is a granuloma so first thing is the uh, granulomatous inflammation the granulomas are, are there in the granulomas the giant cells are there the giant cells are foreign body giant cells or langhans giant cell both type are seen in the granulomas the second thing there is fragmentation of the intima you can appreciate very well in this diagram you can appreciate this is intima here it is continuous 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 but here it is fragmented appreciate the fragmentation here the fragmentation of intima is also a morphological feature here so let me show you the morphological features here so only two morphological features granulomas in the wall and fragmentation of the intima these are the morphological features which we appreciate on biopsy now what are the symptoms of the patient patient comes with non-specific constitutional symptoms like fever fatigue weight loss anorexia headache typical temporal headache the patient is having apart from it the patient can have jaw claudication um, these are the symptoms if temporal artery is involved but what if ophthalmic artery is involved which is also a branch of external carotid artery so patient have blindness which is the most deadly complication or most deadly symptom of giant cell arthritis or temporal arthritis what if vertebral artery is involved patient have arthritis or patient have back pain or arthritis so these can be the symptoms visual symptoms diplopia and blindness can be there arthritis can be there back pain can be there and polymyalgia rheumatica can be there if other branches are involved typically patient have temporal headache appreciate patient will come to the doctor with temporal headache can you see here temporal headache so there can be jaw claudication appreciate the jaw claudication if ophthalmic artery is involved you can appreciate the patient have diplopia the patient have vision loss blindness jaw claudication 
and patient have temporal artery tenderness and headache. Non-specific symptoms can be there. So these are the symptoms. So patient will be coming to the doctor with the following symptoms. You can appreciate the symptoms. Now if a middle aged female having raised ESR with all these symptoms. So your suspicion, the doctor's suspicion should be temporal arthritis and the uh, doctor should take the biopsy to confirm. What is the treatment? The treatment is immediate start the steroid. Why? If the patient is coming only with temporal headache, not blindness. So to prevent the blindness, if you don't give the steroid, the inflammation will progress, progress and ultimately it will involve the ophthalmic artery and patient can come to you with directly blindness and it will be irreversible. Once blindness occurs, it will be irreversible. So give steroid to avoid such complications. So steroid is the treatment. So we are done with temporal arthritis, all important points on which MCQs can be framed. Coming on the second, that is Takayasu arthritis, the, another large vessel arthritis. It usually occurs in adolescent girls and young women. So you can see, it is also known as pulseless disease. Why it is known as pulseless disease? Because here basically, the brachiocephalic, the, uh, the branches of the aortic arch are involved. What are the branches of the aortic arch? It can be subclavian, it can be uh, brachiocephalic, it can be carotid. So these branches of the aortic arch are involved. Since the branches of the aortic arch is involved, it is known as aortic arch syndrome. Now branches of the aortic arch, the branch is uh, brachiocephalic and subclavian that supplies upper limb. And in the upper limb, there is radial artery which can be palpated in the wrist. So patient have involvement of uh, the upper limb arteries. So because of the thickening of the arteries, the pulse cannot be palpated. That's why it is known as pulseless disease. So pulseless disease, it is known as which arteries are involved? So most commonly subclavian arteries are involved. Apart from it, other branches of the arch of aorta, brachiocephalic and carotid are also involved. You can appreciate the narrowing here. You can appreciate the narrowing here. So you can appreciate this is the arch of aorta. These are the branches of arch of aorta. So you can appreciate the narrowing here. So appreciate the narrowing of the brachiocephalic, carotid and subclavian artery in this diagram. These are the two carotid arteries of a uh, cadaver. Of a cadaver uh, or, or on postmortem you can see on autopsy these are the sections of the carotid artery. Appreciate the luminal narrowing here. Appreciate the thickness of the wall and the luminal narrowing in the bilateral carotid artery of a topsy specimen. Uh, in the morphology, it is same, exactly same as that of temporal arthritis. We will find granulomatous inflammation. So giant cell arthritis like we are finding here granulomatous inflammation, that's it. So giant cell arthritis as well as trachiasu arthritis, both of them having granulomatous inflammation. Symptoms, the patient have uh, no palpation of the pulse, no uh, pulse will be absent in the upper limb, not in lower limb. So pulse will be absent in the upper limb, but not in lower limb. It can be uh, feel in the lower limb. The BP in the, the blood pressure in the upper limb is lower as compared to lower limb. The reason is same. So because the branches of the aortic arch that is brachiocephalic and subclavian artery supplies upper limb, but not lower limb. So the pulse and blood pressure of the upper limb will be will be lower as compared to uh, pulse and blood pressure of the lower limb. So there is a discrepancy in the blood pressure of upper limb and lower limb. This is the biggest clue given in the questions for identifying this Takayasu disease. That is the thing. So lower BP and weak pulse in the upper limb as compared to lower limb. Apart from it, ocular disturbance, claudication can happen. You can see, you cannot pa palpate the pulse here of the patient in the breast. The radial artery cannot be palpated. It cannot be felt. The pulse cannot be felt. So these are the symptoms. Treatment is same steroid. So in this session, we have studied the two types of large vessel vasculitis. Still, we have to continue. So in this table, we have continued. Uh, we have uh, completed two giant cell and the Takayasu. Still, we have to continue with the medium vessel and small vessel arthritis in the next session. Thank you.